exploded. You have taught us to set the equation equal to 0. So first thing we do when we're, when we're solving for our x, we're going to set this equal to 0. Right? Because we have more than one x. Right? It's not like a linear equation where you just undo the properties of equality on both sides. We have more than one x. And now, previously, even actually even on your homework for the 1 through well, well, you didn't have to do that for 1 through 4. But previously, you'd have to um, factor it down. But this is already in what? Factored form. It's already factored, right? So we don't need to do anything with this. It's already factored. So that's perfect. And the reason why we want factored form, or it, it written as a factorization, which was on that last test, we want it in factored form because when we have multiple variables, now we can apply the zero product property. So we set each factor equal to 0. And then we just go ahead and solve. Well, here we already have x equals 0. Here, so I have to use my inverse out property. x equals positive 2 minus 5 minus 5. x equals negative 5. Right? So if I was going to find the zeros or the solutions, I could write this as set notation. Or, I'm sorry, as you know, solution set. Right? You could leave them as like this, or you could just write it like a solution set, whatever you know, the case may be. Is everybody OK with that? Yes, no, maybe, so. Good? OK, so we talked about the solutions. That should have been the easier part. Everybody should at least would have come up there. However, the graphing um, is not something we talked about. So this is a little bit of stretch. So now we need to start thinking about what have we learned in this class. Well, one thing I talked about, especially last unit, when we have the real solutions, what do those represent? The real solutions represent what on the graph? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, Julie? Close, Denise? Huh? No, you aren't. Julian's thinking about this. Yes, do you have? The x-intercepts. I think you just misspoke. But yes, the x-intercepts, right? Not the x -intercepts. So it's the, these are the x-intercepts. These are the solutions. So we have negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 0. And we have 1, 2. OK? Now, those are the x-intercepts. Now, what we talked about last class period, though, is the x-intercepts, there's a characteristic of the x-intercept, which we call multiplicity. And what the multiplicity of a x-intercept tells us if the graph crosses or bounces at the 0. And the way to tell the multiplicity is to look at, and you could also write this as x minus 0 if you wanted to, is to look at the linear factor. So I look at all of my factors. Are all of my factors is the variable raised to 1? Yes. OK. So you can only determine the multiplicity of your linear factor. And then to look at the multiplicity, if you guys remember, the multiplicity was the power of the factor, which I wrote in the red. Now, there was no actually number up there, so we know that the number is 1. So we look at the multiplicity, and it's 1 for each one of those. So when the multiplicity was odd, what did that tell us about the, uh, how the graph behaved at the intercept? Did it cross or did it bounce? It's in your notes, but does anybody remember? Yes? It crosses. It crosses. That was in your notes. When the multiplicity is odd, that means the power of your 0, I'm sorry, the power of your factor is odd. doesn't matter if it's 1, 3, 17. If it's odd, Isabel, then the graph crosses at that x-intercept. Do you agree, Isabel? OK. So we still need to sketch this graph, correct? We still need to sketch the graph. And one thing I want you guys to look at is, do we know what the end behavior is of this graph? Do we know, does the graph fall left, rise right, fall, fall right, rise right? We have no idea, right? So. Right, at least right now. If this was in stand, if this was in standard form, could we figure out what the lead, what the end behavior was? Yes. So you have two options. You could multiply this out so that it is in standard form. Okay. However, I'm just like you. I don't want to do any more. I don't want to do any necessary math or unnecessary math. Let's just kind of think about this in a little bit bigger picture. When you guys are determining the end behavior, we really only care about what the first term in standard form, correct? Yes? So let's think about this. Ladies and gentlemen, if I was going to multiply x minus 2 times x plus 5, the first term in that product would be what? What would be the first term? x squared, right? So 
0 equals x times x squared. I really don't care what the rest of that is because it's all going to be smaller than x squared. And when we're talking about m behavior, we only care about the, the highest degree, correct? So we only care about that first term. We don't really care what the rest of this is. Then can I multiply x? If I was going to apply distributive property, x times x squared is going to give me my leading term. So that's going to be 0 equals x cubed dot, 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 dot. Does everybody see what I did? We don't really need to multiply this out exactly to write this in there. But you guys can see that this leading term is going to be x cubed. So if we have x cubed, what does that tell you about your m behavior? Well, the m behavior, if it's an odd degree, that means the graph is either going to fall left, rise right, or rise left, fall right. And that all depends on the leading coefficient. Is that positive or negative? Since that's positive, we know the graph falls left, rises right. Man, this mark green is not doing very well. All right, I'm going to get one. Wait, do you want to fill this out? Yes, you can throw it out. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see what the end behavior is? Does everybody agree with me? Does anybody have any questions? All I have now done is determine what the end behavior was, and I found the zeros, and determined the multiplicity tells me how those zeros interact on the graph. Does everybody see that? Now, ladies and gentlemen, all I have to do to graph the polynomial is just connect. So it has to cross this 0. Then it has to go to this 0. So I'm just going to create a nice little loop. And again, I'm sketching. I'm not being exact. Then I need to come back over through here. So I'm going to loop again. And there is the equation of my graph. Okay. 